Okay, welcome back. We, in the video from five years ago, uh, <coughs> um, about the introduction to related rates, uh, there was this packet called um, Introduction to Related Rates, and we did um, the first three problems together. <coughs> so, um, there were two problems left, uh, page three and page four. They were um, maybe a little bit more difficult than the ones we had done together. I told you to do them for homework. Um, and uh, I can post the answer key to that, but um, I am going to make a video right now where we just do them. <coughs> uh, this will be uh, problem four and problem five, so pages three and pages four from, from this packet. Okay, let's go. Um, car A, and this one I think is, is maybe um, uh, not so different from the ones we had already done together. Um, but maybe, maybe it is, and the, the last page I think is, is actually pretty hard, so, okay, let's go. Um, car A is traveling west, this is the uh, problem, just copy down from the packet. Car A is traveling west at 50 miles per hour, and car B is traveling north at 60 miles per hour. Uh, at what, uh, okay, so at what rate are the cars approaching each other when car A is three-tenths of a mile, and car B is four-tenths of a mile from the intersection. All right, so these problems are just really hard because you have to think, you have to uh, use a certain amount of, of creativity, problem-solving skills, you need to read and interpret, it doesn't tell you exactly what to do, there's some geometry going on, you need to draw a picture, you need to pick variables. Uh, so all uh, of the sort of math, uh, critical thinking, problem-solving skills that you that you have are all uh, coming together at once, and usually the calculus part of the problem is, is not that hard. So, uh, okay, uh, what are we going to do? Maybe first, so well, what's going on? Big picture wise, we have some cars, and the car, one car is traveling west, so okay, you know, this sort of way normally on the map, uh, and the other car is traveling north. So the cars are, are moving uh, along lines that are perpendicular to each other. Uh, and the question is, at what rate are the cars approaching each other? Okay, so what we're really interested in is sort of um, the, the, the uh, way in which the distance between the cars is changing. And maybe it's good to, to um, think a little bit about uh, some common sense uh, kinds of ideas. Like if you're traveling 50 miles per hour in a car, but there's another car that's traveling 50 miles per hour that's driving directly toward you, then in fact, um, the you and the other car are, are moving relative to each other at 100 miles per hour. And so that's kind of what's being asked here. At what rate are the cars approaching each other? Um, if, you are, uh, if you're traveling um, directly at someone, uh, then the, the rate at which you are approaching that person is just the, the sum of, of the individual rates that you're going uh, relative to, to the ground. Uh, so this is more complicated because um, these cars are not uh, um, driving in a line, they're coming at each other at an angle. Okay, so let's do it. Uh, the, the method which I outlined in the video and which I really encourage for solving all of these related rates problems is read and understand the problem. So read it once, read it twice, read it however many times you need to read it until you get what's going on. And I think we've just, we've just talked about this out loud. Uh, so read it one, read and understand the problem. Two, draw a picture. So let's just do that now. We have some car A. Uh, which is moving uh, west, so in this uh, in this direction, and uh, okay, I, I'll just pick a particular uh, point where car A actually is at this moment, uh, let's say, and uh, it's traveling west, so okay, that way, and it's going uh, 50 uh, miles per hour, okay, and there is another car B, which is traveling north at 60 miles per hour, and, um, okay, there's some sort of intersection where they're approaching. Perhaps uh, this problem isn't perfectly worded, but the idea is that the cars are on a path um, which is going to, uh, going to intersect. So, um, uh, it's not that car B, so car B is uh, sort of south of the, of the line that car A is moving on. That was the understanding. So here, uh, perhaps, is uh, car B, and it's traveling... Um, north, uh, and car B is going 60 miles per hour. Um, and uh, these two cars are, are going to meet. Now, um, 
just because, you know, uh, car A is moving in that direction and car B is moving in this direction doesn't mean that they're going to, to crash. Uh, hopefully they don't crash, um, but the, the paths that the cars are, are going to, uh, uh, are taking um, will intercept. And so part of the problem is figuring out, uh, you know, do, do the cars crash into each other or do they miss each other? Uh, who gets to that intersection uh, first? Um, but um, uh, most importantly, we have this uh, calculus, the, the question that requires calculus is this one. At what rate are the cars approaching each other? Okay, I think I, I, I kind of get it now. This picture is pretty good. There's about one more thing I want to add, which is um, if what I want to know is the rate at which they're approaching each other, then as I mentioned, what I want to know is how fast uh, a certain quantity is changing. And that quantity is just the distance the two cars are apart from each other. So I, I definitely want to connect uh, um, uh, the car A and car B, that, uh, those two points, with the segment, uh, because it is the length of this segment, the distance between A and B, uh, that the question is asking about. Specifically, that's at what rate are the cars approaching each other? So what is the rate of change of this quantity? Okay, read and understand the problem. Draw a picture. Pick variables for the quantities which are changing. So, um, what is changing in this problem? Well, one thing that's changing is the distance that uh, car A is from the uh, point of intersection of those paths. So let's just call that x. That seems like a good choice because it's horizontal. And another thing that's changing is the distance um, that B is from the point of intersection. Let's just call that y. And then the other thing we care about is the distance between A and B. All right, excellent. Uh, so, read and understand the problem, pick, draw a picture, pick variables for the quantities which are changing, and now um, rephrase the information given in the problem in terms of those um, new variables that you have chosen. So, uh, okay, so what, what, was, what was sort of given to us in the problem, we're just translating now the, the verbal language into mathematical language. Car A is traveling west at 50 miles per hour. Well, what it means to be traveling at 50 miles per hour is um, that uh, this, the distance between A and this point is changing at a rate of 50 miles per hour. And so if x is the distance uh, A is away from that intersection point, then what I know is that dx dt, uh, which here we have the uh, extremely convenient Leibniz notation, uh, which says that the rate of change of x with respect to time. In other words, given an infinitesimal small amount of time, what is the change in the, uh, in the quantity of x? Well, that's exactly what velocity is, right? Velocity is just the, the derivative of, of position. It's the uh, thing that got us um, started doing calculus in the first place. So here, if x is the distance a is away from that point, then dx dt is the rate of change of x with respect to t. And part of the uh, difficulty in this is just getting very comfortable with this kind of way of thinking and expressing yourself. What is dx dt? Well, you might be tempted to say 50, and that's not totally wrong. Um, but to the extent that A is getting closer to this point of intersection and X is the, the length of that segment, then uh, X is in fact getting smaller. And uh, so when a derivative is negative, it means that the quantity is, is getting smaller. Uh, and so I want to say that dx dt is negative 50 uh, miles per hour. Okay, similarly, what is dy dt? That's the rate of change of Y with respect to time, or more loosely, Given a tiny change in time, what is the change in, in the length of this segment? And the change in the length of the segment um, over a given very small period of time is just the, the speed uh, that, that car B is going. It's the, the speed that car B is going is the rate at which this uh, line segment is shrinking over time. Okay, so hopefully this is, this is clear. So what is dy dt? It's going to be, well also since we're moving north, uh, y is getting smaller and so this is going to be negative 60 miles per hour. Okay, having done that, uh, we are now ready to, to determine what the problem is actually asking for. The problem is asking for the rate at which the cars are approaching each other uh, at that time. And so what we really want to know is um, ds dt. What is the rate of change of s with, with respect to t? And that at um, the a particular moment. So, uh, yeah, and this is something uh, which I, I might not have stressed in the original video from five years ago, but I, I want to stress now, is that, um, yeah, 
uh, when, when these problems are written for students to do, there, there's sort of um, usually this uh, bias given towards asking them to sort of solve a very particular problem. Uh, in this case, um, well, maybe I should just keep going. Uh, the, the, this initial problem is asking for uh, DSDT, but it's not asking for DSDT in general. Notice it says, at what rate are the cars approaching each other? When car A is 0.3 miles and car B is 0.4 miles from the intersection. In other words, we want to know DSDT when, and that's what this vertical line is for, uh, X equals 0.3 and Y equals 0.4. Uh, okay, more on that later. All right, read and understand the problem. Uh, uh, draw a picture. Pick variables for the quantities which are changing. Uh, Re-express the information given and the information uh, required. Uh, in terms of those new variables. And then uh, maybe like a little extra step here where we sort of think about what's going on. So um, to the largest extent possible, we should try to sort of use our intuition here. Um, you know, what's sort of, sort of happening, uh, I guess? Uh, and, and it's possible that you just don't have any, any intuition, but you can at least try. And sometimes the intuition comes at the end after you've solved the problem. But, uh, you know, when X and Y are sort of very big, um, it seems that ds dt will be smaller? I don't even know if that's true. Uh, I don't know. Actually, I have, no, I have no intuition. But I think what I can say is that um, it's not going to be such a simple number. It's, it, it seems to be not true that um, the speed of s, the apparent uh, uh, rate at which the, the two cars are getting close to each other, will be uh, constant. So even though x is constant and y is constant, s is going to be changing at a non-constant rate. Uh, I think when x and y are small, it's going to be getting smaller faster. Uh, I'm actually not totally sure about that. Okay, uh, la 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 la, let's go. Um, what's the next step? Pick variables for the quantities which are changing, re-express the information given in terms of those variables, and now find a relationship between the variables. So what is the relationship between x, y, and s? Well, here I think it's, it's pretty obvious that the relationship between x, y, and s is the Pythagorean relationship. So this is the static relationship between the variables. This is the kind of thing that in a geometry class uh, you would have uh, 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 observed this relationship. And now, you know, if you give me x and y, I can tell you what s is. If you give me y and s, I can tell you what x is, etc. Okay, but in calculus, we are not just investigating the relationships between the variables, the static relationships between the variables, but also the rates at which the variables are changing. So we want to know, given tiny, tiny changes in time, how, is the rate, how are the rates of changes of these variables related to each other? That's why it's called related rates. All right, so we sprinkle some magic calculus pixie dust on this static equation, and we make it sort of come to life, uh, come to life in a sort of infinitesimal small period of time. And what I mean by that is we take the derivative of both sides with respect to t. That's my kind of notation for that. Okay, and now I just assume that you're all experts on implicit differentiation, uh, and so then it becomes uh, quite uh, easy to see that if I'm differentiating x squared with respect to t, then the chain rule is, is, is relevant. And so what is the derivative with respect to t of something squared? The answer uh, is it's a uh, 2 uh, something uh, back inside for the derivative of the something. And uh, what is the derivative of uh, uh, y squared with respect to t? Well, the derivative of something squared is 2 something back inside for the derivative of the something. Uh, so that's also t. And uh, I'm using cursive for some reason. Uh, I guess I always do that. Uh, and here, uh, what is the derivative uh, with respect to d of s squared? Well, that's 2s back inside ds dt. Okay, so all the calculus is just one line. Uh, everything out, the hard part is the thinking and understanding and the problem solving part. Okay, well, having done that, uh, one thing I can certainly do is, um, is divide by 2, so maybe just do that really quick. So, da, da, um, plus uh, y uh, dy dt um, equals uh, s ds dt. Okay, and what was the, the overall question was, what is ds dt? Okay, so I'm going to do something that not everyone necessarily always does, but I think it's, it's worth keeping this clear in your mind. What is ds dt? Well, just divide both sides by s. 
And so what you get is x times dx dt plus y times dy dt all over s. And I'm going to put a box around this because if we were uh, serious uh, intellectuals, then this would actually be the thing that we care about. Uh, what I have just derived, in general, for any particular uh, 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 arrangement of cars which are moving towards each other in a perpendicular direction, at any arbitrary speeds, I have just calculated, uh, using uh, geometry and calculus, uh, a formula for the rate at which those cars are approaching each other. And it turns out that this formula depends on uh, five things. Um, it depends on uh, 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 how far, um, it depends on x, so how far away the, the moving west car is from the point of intersection, um, the rate at which x is, is moving, how far uh, away the moving north car is from the point of intersection, and how fast that car is moving, and uh, how fast the cars are, are apart from each other. And, and maybe because of the Pythagorean theorem, you know, you can calculate s from x and y, so maybe you want to say it just depends on, on four things. Um, so four things go, go into this uh, formula, and I think this formula is quite deep, and you can sort of think about it a little bit, uh, and I think you will conclude that, um, gosh, I don't know what exactly you could conclude from this, but uh, this, this is the sort of general case. Okay, uh, students maybe find this a little to be a little bit unsatisfying to just prove a general rule, and so what everyone does, including I will do it too, and textbooks all do it, is actually ask you to solve a particular problem because maybe that seems more sort of like useful or something. Uh, and so let's now solve the particular problem. And the particular problem was not asking for ds dt in general, but asking for ds dt for this particular problem and at some particular moment. And in fact, we can do sort of two uh, simplifications here. One is that, well, I know what dx dt is. dx dt is the rate at which uh, the car A is moving, so that's just 50. And so perhaps your general uh, uh, instinct would be to just replace that as soon as possible. And dy dt, we calculated, was 60. And this is all over s. OK, so I'm just like, going to also put a box around this answer, because now um, this is the formula for ds dt uh, for an arbitrary uh, x and y uh, distance, um, but for this particular problem in which car A is moving at 50 miles per hour and car B is moving at 60 miles per hour. So this is still kind of a general rule. Um, but what the actual uh, problem wants us to do is solve it uh, at a particular moment. And for no particular reason, this problem is asking for um, the, the ds dt when car A is uh, three-tenths of a mile away from the intersection and car B is four-tenths of a mile away from the intersection. In other words, solve ds dt for the particular moment at which x is 0.3 and y is 0.4. Well, that's what this formula is good for, right? You can think of this thing in this uh, second box um, as, as being the, uh, uh, a formula which, if you substitute into it, uh, x, y, and s will tell you the rate at which the two cars are approaching each other. Uh, and so that's exactly what I'm going to do. This is uh, 50 times uh, uh, when x is 0.3, so that's 3 tenths, uh, plus uh, 60 times when y is uh, 0.4, so, so 4 tenths, uh, all over uh, and now S. Oh, suddenly I realize that I have uh, something to do because um, I have to now ask myself, well, what is S when X is 0.3 and Y is 0.4? So this is another sort of optional step that's sometimes required, which is to do, to do more geometry on the sort of particular case. And so now I'm going to draw myself like a tiny little picture uh, and now I'm going to say, okay, this picture's not, not, not to scale, but when this is 0.3 and this is 0.4, like what is S in that situation? And the answer is, duh, this is just a 3, 4, 5 triangle shrinked by a factor of 10, so this is going to be a 0.5. So essentially I'm applying the Pythagorean theorem with the particular information of X and Y. And what I've just concluded is when X is 0.3 and Y is 0.4, S is 0.5. And so I put this 0.5 here, or um, uh, maybe I'll write 
Well, I'll, go, I'll just write one half. Okay. So, uh, finally, I have some numbers, and, uh, okay, what are these numbers? Um, i got to, like, do some stuff now. Uh, that's, like, divided by 5, so that's, like, 15 uh, plus uh, 24 uh, over half. So, what's that? Um, uh, thir uh, 39 times 2, so that's 78. Uh, miles per hour. Okay, so indeed, uh, if this now kind of makes sense, of course, that if uh, x is traveling uh, at 50 miles per hour and y is traveling at 60 miles per hour, then the rate at which the two points are getting close to each other is going to be um, uh, a greater than that. It's going to obviously be greater than 60 because, because okay, I think it's, I'll stop talking now. Uh, the rate at which A and B are getting close to each other is going to be larger than 50 and larger than 60, but less than 110 because they're moving uh, uh, towards each other at an angle. And you can try to uh, plug in other, um, well, I'll leave it at that. Okay, so we've now solved the problem, or actually we, we've solved the calculus problem, uh, and then this problem just asks you to do some sort of follow-up, which is not even really calculus, it's just, it's just pre-calculus. Uh, oh, and I guess... I guess if I'm being uh, for real here, then I should add negatives, right? Because really, um, uh, 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 dx dt is negative 50, and dy dt is negative 60. So if these all are all negative, then uh, it makes this negative 78 miles per hour, which is just another way of saying that um, A and B are getting closer to each other. Okay, uh, now the, the follow-up question is, uh, which car gets to the intersection first, and uh, by how many seconds do the cars miss crashing into each other? Okay, so which car gets to the intersection first? Uh, yeah, I need no calculus for this, right? A is uh, 0.3 miles away from the intersection and is moving at 50 miles per hour. So, yeah, so the, 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 so the time of... Uh, a, maybe it's worth it to call this point of intersection something like C. So the, the time of, um, uh, uh, of, uh, of car A uh, to uh, C, the point of intersection, is going to be, well, distance equals rate times time, and so if I want to find the time it takes for that car to get to the point of intersection, I just divide the distance by the rate. So the distance is 0.3 uh, miles uh, over the rate, which is 50. So whatever that is, that's um, three five hundredths. Okay, so three five hundredths of an hour it takes uh, for car A to get to um, uh, the point of intersection. And what is the, the time of uh, car uh, B uh, to the point of intersection? Well, car B is 0.4. Four uh, miles away, and it's moving at 60 miles per hour. So whatever that is, uh, four tenths two over three. No, um, uh, what have I done? Yeah, one over yeah, two over four over four over 600, uh, which is just um, two over 300, which is just one over 150 um, uh, hours. Okay, so uh, which of those numbers is, is, is bigger? Uh, well, this 1 over 150 is also just uh, 3 over 450, and so it takes uh, car A 3 five hundredths of an hour to get to the point of intersection. It's going to take car C uh, 3 four hundred and fiftieths. So this number is the denominator is bigger, the number is smaller, and so car A gets there first. Uh, car A gets um, there uh, first. Uh, yet, however, it is really, really close. How much do they miss each other by is just, the answer to that question is just, um, uh, you know, what is the gap in the times? And so essentially what we're being asked is, what's the difference between uh, 1 over 150 uh, and uh, how long it takes B to get there? minus uh, 3 over 500, and, uh, okay, what is this number, uh, oh man, common denominator, so it's like um, something, 3 over 3, no, uh, 
Yeah, 10 over 10. So it's ten, um, 10 minus 9 over 1,500. I think I did that right. Uh, multiply this by 10 over 10. Multiply this by 3 over 3. Yeah, and so it's 1 1,500th of an hour is ha by how much they miss each other. Uh, okay, what is that? Well, now we just do some, like, you know, middle school dimensional analysis. Uh, if you give me uh, one, if in one, uh, one over fifth, what am I doing? Oh, yeah. Uh, so in one, uh, in one hour, there are 60 seconds. Uh, in s try again, there are 60 minutes. And in one minute, there are 60 seconds. Can't believe I'm doing this. Uh, then uh, all the units cancel, and so the answer to this problem is 3,600 over 1,500, so that's 36 over 15, so that's um, uh, 12 over 5, and so 12 fifths of a second, and so the answer is 2.4 uh, seconds. So the cars miss, miss each other by 2.4 seconds. Uh, that's assuming that the cars are, are, are points. Uh, okay, extremely long-winded long -winded video. Hopefully you watched that at 1.5 speed. Good, let's do the last problem, uh, which I think is, is, is I don't wanna say it's necessarily harder, but it's, it's new. It's not like, uh, at least part of it is not like uh, any other problem in this packet. So I bet it's the one uh, that, that people had trouble with. And, uh, okay, in the, um, in the, um, in a normal, in a normal year, I, I usually do this problem uh, in class um, on the, 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 the second day of related rates. Okay, here we go. Uh, I'm going to read it out loud. I'm not going to write the whole problem down. So um, hopefully you have this packet with you. A man walks along a straight path at a speed of 4 feet per second. A searchlight is located on the ground 20 feet from the path and is kept focused on the man. At what uh, rate is the searchlight rotating when the man is 15 feet from the point on the path closest to the searchlight? How fast is he moving away from the searchlight at this same moment? Oh boy, a lot going on here. You might have to read this several times. First of all, what do we have? We have a path. It's a straight path. A man is walking along that straight path. Okay, there's a searchlight. The searchlight is also on the ground. All right, so everything's on the ground. So if everything's on the ground, this is really just a two-dimensional problem. And uh, let's draw a picture which uh, reflects the, the view from above. That seems like a good idea. So we have some kind of path. And the man is walking along uh, this path, and uh, it doesn't matter which way you draw it, or at least it shouldn't matter, let's just say the man is walking this way. Okay, a man walks along a straight path at 4 feet per second. So if you want to uh, add in uh, 4 feet per second to the picture, you, you can do that. Uh, great, okay, the man is walking that way. What else is going on? Well, there's a searchlight, and the searchlight is located on the ground, but the searchlight is 20 feet away from the path. Okay, so the searchlight is not on the path. The searchlight is off the path. And specifically, it's 20 feet off the path. So, uh, and, okay, we always measure distance from a point to a line, you know, is, is understood to be the perpendicular distance. And so that means that the searchlight's like here or whatever. So if that's the man and that's the searchlight, I don't know how to draw a searchlight, so I'll just draw that. Uh, then this searchlight is, is going to be is going to be looking at the man. Uh, the man is maybe doing some cool dance or uh, maybe running away from prison, who knows what. But there's a searchlight, and the searchlight is kept uh, looking at the man at all times. That's what's going on here, right? A man walks along a straight path at four feet per second. A searchlight is located on the ground 20 feet from the path and is kept focused on the man. And uh, at what rate is the searchlight rotating? when the man is 15 feet from the point on the path closest to the searchlight. Uh, and the next question is, how fast is he moving away from the searchlight at the same moment? Okay, so there's a lot of stuff going on here. There's a person. He's walking along the path. 
then as he's walking along the path, he's getting farther and farther away from the searchlight. But the other thing that has to happen, of course, is that the searchlight is rotating. And the searchlight has to rotate in order to be, uh, have it, uh, uh, to have the, the light um, hitting the, the man. And so I've sort of drawn in now the sort of uh, path of, of light going from the searchlight to the man. Okay, and so uh, I think we now understand the problem after just reading it and reading it and thinking and rereading it again and making a picture and all that kind of stuff. I think I, I, I get it. And what's the, what's the idea here? The idea here is that uh, the searchlight is rotating, um, but also um, uh, perhaps uh, we need to keep track of not just the angle that we need to rotate the searchlight, but also how far away the man is from the searchlight. Because perhaps this is uh, not a searchlight, but some sort of like video camera or something like that. And uh, perhaps we are staging some complex action scene in which uh, someone is running along, you know, some like James Bond or whatever type thing is like running along a path. And we have a camera uh, at a fixed spot and we need to rotate the camera so that it stays pointing at the man, but we also need to, imagine this is a world without autofocus, we also need to continuously be focusing the camera such that the object uh, of the camera is staying, is staying in focus. Um, and so to, to know uh, how to focus the camera, uh, if we were going to be, say, uh, programming uh, perhaps this camera to, to execute this action because it was happening so quickly, then we would like to know at any given moment how far away the man is from the camera. So this to me is, is, is a really kind of practical problem. Uh, as this person is running, exactly how far away are they from the camera at any given moment? How fast is the person, uh, uh, is the distance from the camera changing? And how fast is the angle of, of rotation changing? All right, so read and understand the problem. Draw a picture. Pick variables for the quantities which are changing. Okay, well what's changing in this case is the distance that the man is from the, uh, oh, and this was this, um, that's in fact what they ask about, right? Uh, la, 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 la. A searchlight is located 20 feet from the path. At what rate is the searchlight rotating when the man is 15 feet from the point on the path closest to the searchlight? Okay, and so I'm going to call this X. X is, if you were being extremely uh, disciplined about this, you would actually write down for yourself, like the definition of X, but I'm just going to say it out loud. X, let X be the distance that the man is from the point on the path that is closest to the searchlight. Okay, then uh, theta seems to be under discussion. What is theta? Theta is the angle uh, that the uh, searchlight uh, makes uh, with the uh, shortest distance to the, to the path. Uh, and then there is the distance the man is from the searchlight, let's call that S. Okay, we've just really done the hardest part of this problem, I think, which is um, uh, understanding it, drawing a picture, picking variables for the quantities which are changing. Also, notice um, that, uh, notice that uh, 20 is not changing. The um, uh, searchlight is 20 feet away 